to EMS Office Hours. This is Jim Hoffman, and these are your Monday Minutes. Thanks so much for joining me, guys, today. And we're going, of course, continue on with some Monday Minutes and finish up the hemorrhage and shock section. And we're going to talk today about the different types of shock. Now, before we get into that, of course, I would like to remind you that this stuff is important more for than just using it on exams. Okay, yeah, it's key information help you pass your exams, but it's also here to make let you make better clinical decisions, to write better reports, to interact more effectively with other healthcare providers, and also to build your knowledge base, to move your knowledge needle just a little bit. So we're going to talk about, like I said, types of shock. And let me fix myself here, but the... You'll see different types, right? Old versus new types of shock, right? The old way you would be described as it was cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock, neurogenic shock, anaphylactic, septic. Now it's kind of broken down a little cleaner where you've got your cardiogenic, you've got your hypovolemic, and then instead of the other three, they break them down a little bit more into either obstructive or distributive. But the bottom line, right, is that all types of shock occur because of that underlying lack of tissue perfusion. Things like fluid loss, significant vasodilation, and pump failure. Pump meaning the heart, right? So I'm going to focus on the new types of shock for this presentation, since I think a lot of people are in that. But of course, we're going to mention neurogenic and anaphylactic and septic as well. We're going to start with cardiogenic, okay? And one thing I want to just kind of show you here that very similar when it comes to some of the signs and symptoms as far as looking at it as opposed to hypovolemic shock, right? But the difference is, is when a cardiogenic shock patient, they might be complaining of chest pain, the heart rate may be different, okay? A lot of times it'll be much slower. You won't have that tachycardia going on so much because there may be a dysrhythmia happening. You might have signs and symptoms of CHF, signs like JVD, right? So some things to think about there. And you're looking at, this is a complete pump failure of the heart. So your dysrhythmia might be things like third degree heart blocks, right? Um, look for that pulmonary edema. Look for difficulty in breathing. The patient having uh, rails, wheezing, diminished lung sounds, okay? Um, and of course, a productive cough. And a cough, white sputum, pink, pink colored sputum, and the ultimental status, which is common with a lot of different types of shock. Okay, so keep it keep in mind that, that you know there's different types of shock, and don't just think because the patient isn't tachycardic, right, that they're not in some type of a shock, or right? they could be in cardiogenic shock. All right, now we talk about the hypovolemic shock, this is the most popular, right? We see this all the time. This is pretty much that loss of blood or loss of fluid, right? The hemorrhaging, the dehydration, the ex excessive sweating, even burns, right? Loss of the plasma from patient that might be severely burned, okay? Uh, again, your ultimental status, the cool pale diaphoretic patients, the blood pressure that ends up falling, your heart rate going from normal to fast to slow as the patient decompensates in hypovolemic shock, right? Again, the most common, and of course, is finding the cause, trying to find out why it is that the patient is in this type of shock, okay? Um, obstructive shock, like I said, it used to be different things. Now we talk about things like pulmonary embolisms, cardiac tamponade, tension pneumothorax, right? This is that obstruction to the normal cardiovascular circulation of the, the patient's blood, all right? And a lot of, when we're looking at these types of shocks, we're looking at what are we doing? What's the cause of it? Is it a tension pneumothorax? Is it a cardiac tamponade, tamponade? Is it a pulmonary embolism? What is it that's causing the obstruction, the obstruction, the obstructive shock? Okay, and that's what we're looking for. Those key elements when you're thinking about what the patient, how the patient might be in shock, thinking about those signs and symptoms of shock. This is what we're looking to do. Okay, now distributive shock. This is the other stuff, right? Anything caused by that abnormal distribution and return of blood. All right, because of vessel permeability, vasodilation, like I mentioned earlier on, right, that, that significant vasal dilation, or both. Okay, so now we talk about septic shock. Don't get too much into it, very popular today, but these are the patients. When they're in this type of shock, 
they're a lot of times can be feverish, right? They're not going to be the cool pale diaphoretic. So keep, you got to keep in mind these different presentations with shock, right? It's not all cool pale diaphoretic patients, right? They can be flushed, right? They might be feverish, like I said. They could have pale skin. They could be cyanotic. Again, difficulty breathing and altered lung sounds with these patients. Think things like pneumonia, okay? Um, neurogenic shock. And this is that that's something that's happening because the CNS system has been injured. All right, so it's interrupting nerve impulses that go into the arteries. So then the arteries end up losing their muscle, ter- muscle tone. They dilate, right? The vasodilation, they dilate. The, the, body, the, the body's not getting fluid, okay? And it, it's not that it's lost fluid. It's just not getting it distributed the, way it's distributed the way it should be, right? Hence, the distributive nature of this shock, okay? So the container itself has been enlarged because of the the uh, you know the the, the 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 arteries dilating right so there's no fluid loss so the container is getting bigger not enough stuff pumping around and you get the neurogenic shock okay the anaphylactic this is more tricky guys there's so many things that can cause an anaphylactic type shock right and the signs and symptoms vary depending upon what it is the patient is suffering from okay I have the, a, a litany of stuff here that I put down everything from Flush and it, flushed, itchy skin, all the way down to things like dizziness, headaches, seizures. Think about things with the gut, the nausea, vomiting, the abdominal cramping, diarrhea, all the things that will lead you to believe along the lines that it could be something going on here before anaphylactic. Thing. Of course, guys, this is where your clinical impressions come into view, right? How you figure out if it's a septic shock, a neurogenic anaphylactic, hypovolemic, whatever the case may be, by doing your complete patient assessment, okay? Um, so you have to keep this stuff in mind, guys, because every, every shock patient is not going to be cool pill diaphoretic. Every shock patient is not going to be, um, uh, uh, you know, have a, a low blood pressure or have a, a high heart rate, okay? Um, think about what's going on with the patient. Okay, think about what it is that brought you there and what brought them to the situation that they're in. Okay, so it's all about that clinical impression, asking the appropriate questions, doing your patient assessments, okay, and getting that system down and doing those patient assessments the same all the time so you don't miss something like a septic shock. Okay, Um, guys, when we talk things about managing shock, there's not a lot we can do. Most of it is that fluid replacement. Right, and depending upon your protocols, it could be normal saline, it could be lingers, ring, lingers, uh, uh, ringers lactate, it could be D five W. Okay, um, and you know you want, of course, repair it. You want to stop the cause, right? If they're bleeding, stop the bleeding. If there's a dysrhythmia, like third degree heart block, something like that, you want to stop that. Um, if it's an allergic reaction, you want to mitigate that allergic reaction. A lot of times that means you're going to restore that perfusion by giving drugs, by maybe positioning the patient a certain way, maybe by giving, again, more fluid replacement to go ahead and restore that perfusion, help repair and stop the cause of what it is that's causing them to be in shock. Okay, and of course, guys, we always want to manage that airway, right? Manage it as needed. Oxygen intubation if required especially that anaphylactic stuff going on even septic patients right that that advanced pneumonia keep in mind manage that airway okay and sometimes drugs can be used right when you're trying to manage the airway think about the allergic reactions with the wheezing and having to give things like albuterol and things like that in order to go ahead and help the you know the airways and help the patient breathe that way as, as well Okay, so just some things, guys, to think about. Again, this is these are the high points, right? The things that I'm hoping is going to help you through your tests is going to give you the high points and the key elements. You're going to see a lot on your exams. Okay, so if something doesn't make sense to you, be sure crack open your book, look at your review guide, use whatever app you might be using, or if you're using a certain website or something like that, right? Go ahead, do the research. Okay, if something like like I mentioned earlier with the um, with the distributive shock, if something like I mentioned here with septic or anaphylactic doesn't seem to be ringing true to you or you're not really getting it, open your book and do a little bit more research. By doing that, you are going to find yourself mastering these topics much, much easier 
and it's going to make much more sense to you and you're not going to have to keep going back and restudying this stuff every time a test comes up because you will master this topic because you're breaking it down to smaller chunks okay now guys if you if you want you can engage with me of course anywhere on social media you can get me on twitter or instagram i'm at ems safe on both of those channels or you can get me on facebook and it's facebook.com forward slash the ems professional i'd love to engage with you in any of these channels and guys if you want something to help you build your knowledge base to move your knowledge needle here is a free members only website that you can join me in it's turbo medic there's a special insider membership. This is a free level membership. I don't call it free. I call it insider because you are coming inside an exclusive membership. Okay. And I don't call it free because your time and efforts of reading and studying and taking advantage of this content is comes at a cost as well. Right. Your personal cost. Right. Your, your cost of time and effort and understanding okay of the content you're trying to better yourself with okay inside the membership you can get gigabytes of digital content of content there's hours of audio and video there's even practice exams and even exclusive access to me and the facebook membership as well okay for turbo medic so go check that out guys you can become a free member it's an insider membership you can go to emsseo.com forward slash insider there'll be a link in the notes as well so you can go ahead and click on that and join me there as an insider trust me guys there's a lot of stuff there and will help you move that ems knowledge needle just a little bit and i think you'll find by moving it just a little bit a little at a time you will become a much more efficient and even have more fun when it comes to studying and understanding what it is we do as ems professionals so guys that's going to be it um be sure to comment below send me your comments if you want you can send me direct to contact at emsofficehours.com be sure to check out emsofficehours.com for previous monday minutes and also for the the, the uh, podcast there as well all right so that's it guys as always i am jim hoffman for ems office hours and monday minutes Bye.